Monster Hunter first released all the way back in 2004. Oh, uh, happy 20th anniversary, I guess. Wow, I, f I forgot about that. Prior to World, the series sold incredibly well in Japan, but for whatever reason, it never caught on in the West. Well, that is, up until Monster Hunter World, and now the series is as mainstream as it gets. So, how did we get here? I'm Ouroboros. Let's talk. Well, like I said, the original Monster Hunter released way back in 2004. It sold decently well, but really made waves when Monster Hunter Freedom came to PSP and sold 1.3 million units worldwide. If you add up all of the first generation games, which is Monster Hunter, its G-Rank expansion, and Freedom, we end up with just over 2 million units, which for a brand new IP in the early 2000s, that's pretty good. And the series continued to sell better and better as the generations went on. Capcom got into a rhythm of releasing base games along with expanded G-Rank versions. Okay, quick side tangent. G-Rank is the old term for the new Master Rank. It's basically a new difficulty tier with new monsters, locations, and gear. But they quickly realized that their portable titles were far outselling their console titles. Prior to World's release in 2018, the last console-exclusive Monster Hunter was Try in 2009 for the Wii, which was a controversial pick to say the least. See, the Monster Hunter series had been exclusively on PlayStation systems before that point, so switching companies from the one that made your series great was a weird choice. But then they released Portable slash Freedom 3rd a year later on PSP, and then a year after that on PS3. But then 3 Ultimate was released on 3DS and Wii U in 2011? And the fourth generation games were exclusively on 3DS before the Double Cross slash Generations Ultimate Switch port a few months after the 3DS release, which took a few years later to come to the West. Are you noticing a pattern? It's a messy history with Capcom jumping between companies and consoles. There are confusing names between regions. There are confusing names even within a single generation. Like, why is it Monster Hunter X? Oh, sorry, Monster Hunter cross in Japan, but in the West, it's generations. Why were there games specifically with the word portable in the title when the series eventually became mostly portable? It's just so unorganized and many games never even released in the West, which is why Monster Hunter World is the best thing that Capcom could have ever done. It's a simple title. There's no weird localization changes to it. It's Monster Hunter World everywhere. It released on Xbox and PlayStation with a simultaneous worldwide release and a PC port followed about eight months later. It was simple in naming and the confusing mess of G's and portables and ultimates were gone. But more importantly, Capcom developed a game that brought the franchise up to modern standards. If you've ever played any of the pre-world games, they're... How do I put this delicately? It can feel like you're trying to drive a car with square wheels. There's just enough jank that it gets frustrating at times. And that's coming from somebody who loves Generations Ultimate. World's combat is so much more fluid, and it feels like you can just control your characters better. The hunters feel more responsive to every single input. Capcom was kind of stuck in their ways because they kept these games on older hardware. I think they very well could have made world-like changes years earlier, but because the games were on 3DS for so long, they just never did. And then you add on the myriad of quality of life changes and the massive rework of the areas. They just nailed world. It was a big risk, and it could not have paid off any better. Prior to world, the best-selling game in the series was Freedom 3, with 4.9 million units sold. There are a handful of games within that four to five million unit range, but World, according to Capcom themselves, has sold 20.5 million units. 
which is their highest selling game of all time, by over 5 million units. And hey, guess what their second highest selling game is? Monster Hunter Rise, the very next game in the series. A year and a half after the release of Base World, Capcom released its expansion, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Keep in mind, this is just an expansion. And it's Capcom's fifth highest selling title. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Obviously, I wouldn't have gotten into the series without World, but more so because of how hard the developers worked. The game spent four years in development, so to see that level of commitment be rewarded is something you don't see every day within the games industry. And it kind of came along at the perfect time for Capcom themselves. They were struggling a little bit when World released, but since then, they've come up with so many high quality games. We can even measure the growth based off some of their YouTube videos. Let's take a look at the super basic weapon previews from each game. I'll use Greatsword just to keep things consistent. World's Greatsword video, 219,000 views. Rise, 326,000. The new preview for the upcoming game, Monster Hunter Wilds, 747,000. That's insane. The video has only been up for 11 days too. Granted, views drop off pretty quickly, but I can't imagine what it's gonna be like when they announce a new weapon. Capcom, I know you're not listening to me. Give me a new weapon. I want a new comically oversized sword so I can skin the local wildlife and wear their hide as a hat. That's all I'm asking for. That's it. That's all I want. But seriously, World plus Iceborne has basically sold the same as all the previous games combined. It's not as viral as something like Minecraft or Fortnite, but you don't often see a well-established series go through such a renaissance like this. I don't want to say it's exactly like what Breath of the Wild did for Zelda. The series was already pretty well known throughout the world, but I would say that the jump in sales is at least comparable. But even then, it's not quite the same. I had heard of Monster Hunter, but even as someone so thoroughly engrossed in the gaming community, I never really thought to give it a chance until World came out. Putting it on major consoles gave the series some well-needed attention and I'm glad that Capcom is invested in multi-platform releases. I'm hoping that the new Switch is going to be powerful enough to run the game. While I'll probably pick up the PC version, I think giving everyone the option to experience a game is much healthier for the gaming industry, and I'm glad that's the direction we seem to be heading. I think the big game companies have finally realized that the PC market is pretty large, and porting their existing games over is well worth the effort. Well everyone except Nintendo, but they've kind of always done their own thing. I'm happy that Monster Hunter has grown. I don't have the same level of pride in it that I'm sure many, many veterans do, but I can't help but feel happy for Capcom. It's like watching your neighbor's kid succeed. Sure, I didn't put in the time and effort to help raise them, but you can't help but smile because you've heard about that journey and can see the little things they do every day to reach that point. Obviously, I'm excited for Wilds. We don't know too much about the game at the time of this video, but I have no doubt that it could easily surpass the success of World. From there, uh, who knows what's going to happen. I don't even know what pants I'm going to wear tomorrow, let alone things that many years into the future. All I know is that if Capcom keeps this trend of spending the time and the effort needed to develop exceptional games, their work will be rewarded just as it has in the past. Thanks for watching.